Hello, welcome back to the Namaste session, our Namaste morning experience. It is so great to have all of you. It is Friday, which means we're going to lift it even higher, if that were possible. Well, that's a good question. Is that possible? Of course. I mean, yeah. I mean, it depends upon one's perspective, doesn't it? If if we if we are already whole and perfect in everything, then there is nothing higher than that, but our experience can be lifted, certainly. We can come into a higher experience, and that is why this morning we are going to begin with Vicky. Right. Vicky is going to guide us in, and so Vicky, good morning. What would you like to start with today? Oh, thank you, Brother James. I would like to start with, first, I love you all. Thank you. I love you all. And angels. I wanted to start with angels. I want to I want to open the whole field of angels to um, celebrate, to enjoy. And uh, yesterday, James said, can you think of something you'd like to start that's very deep and exciting? And my first thought was, well, the most exciting thing that's happening to me right now that, that seems very deep, but seems very everywhere, are angels. The angels are everywhere. So um, what I want to say, just as a point of information, today's lesson is a great one if you look at it, because we're not alone in experiencing our thoughts or the effects of our thoughts, and our thoughts are our prayers. So when we have thoughts of love and recognition of God and spirit and divinity and angels all around us, our thoughts are shared. When we pay attention to only the truth and the angels are here to help us, to support us, to play with us, to dance with us, to sing with us, if we are willing, only if we are willing, the angels themselves will never go against free will. No, nothing in creation can go against the law of love, which is freedom, which is unity. So the angels, being a creation of God, are here. Two things. The angels historically have said or have um, demonstrated two things. The first thing they always say when they appear to anyone through the Old Testament and before that, through the, the drawings and the cave walls in Egypt and before that, be not afraid, don't be afraid. And their presence brings warmth and shimmering, shimmering kind of otherworldly light, not the light that we see with our eyes, but the light that we can sense, that we can feel. And indeed, I'm sure there are many right here in this room and in Nahihi who can hear and see angels. Now, I'm not one of them, but I sure can sense them. So I'm one of those, I can sense things, whatever those people are called, <laughs> there's something. And I would not have sensed them so well until I lived quietly. So I can, it's, it's been very important that I apparently be in a different environment, being away from my regular life up until this time. So lately, and this started, with you guys a few weeks ago when I was doing one of our Silent Wednesdays. And all of a sudden, on about three weeks ago, I got flooded with the experience of, oh my God, there are angels all around me. And it wasn't just reading in a book. So I just opened to that and I have been. So every Wednesday, it's become stronger and stronger and it has become more fun. So I tell you as your sister here, just pay attention to your thoughts. Don't let your thoughts run into anything negative because everything positive, everything true is a thought of love, everything. There isn't anything that isn't an experience of love if we choose it, but we have to choose it. And the angels cannot wait to help us. They don't wanna be idly standing by. They're here to help. So the first thing, the message, and I asked this morning, well, what will I say? And they said, tell everybody we're here. We're here. We're everywhere, and we want to help. We want to help you with your thinking, with your eating, with your talking, with your driving, with your um, work, with whatever you're doing. We can help. And then I have 
I want a lot of wonderful examples, but I'm going to keep them to just a couple. But the first ones I want to share with you, I'm telling you, it's like, like in the last week, it's as if I, I, I can't take my attention off them. So I brought up musical instruments from downstairs because I know they're singing to me. So I said, I have to sing back. I have to, so I brought little drums and little things so I can play to them every day. So now I'm playing to them in the morning. I wake up, I talk to everybody, I welcome, I thank them. I play these songs to them. <clears throat> and they've been giving me all these little presents. I'm telling you, it's just too funny. I go to, I have a thought in my mind, oh, I need a cup. I walk into the store and there's the perfect cup for me. Here's the cup. I have a thought in my mind, I need a notebook. And I go to get something else. I brought you all my, this is show and tell today. I brought you all my thing. I got a perfect notebook because my notebook that I've used for four years was finished. I use one notebook for, you know, keep the monthly stuff and it's all used up. And so 24, just in the right time. And I thought, oh, I'll get one someday. I walk in and there it is. But what I'm saying is I know I laugh because I know they're answering me. They're saying Thank you. I see. And here are little presents. I needed a pair of boots. I go to Amazon and I, I see all oh, the perfect boots. Perfect boot. But they say, don't worry, but you can't get it until the end of January, beginning of February. And I said, okay, well, that must be the perfect boot anyway. Yesterday, and it started to snow this morning, they sent a note said, oh, all of a sudden your boots are available. It's coming today. And I said, oh my, in time for today's snow. And now while I'm talking to you, while we're sitting as a family, paying attention to angels, it's snowing. It hasn't snowed in three years here. They don't have, a, for whatever reason, it hasn't had a lot of snow. But today it's snowing, beautiful white blanket of snow. So, and then I told you the other day, I started to fall down the stairs and I know an angel picked me up. I know it because I was headed down and something just lifted me up and I landed on my feet. So all I want to say is they're here, they're everywhere. But just like the Christ in us, nothing can exist that's true in a spirit of doubt. We mustn't have doubt. So we need to experience all this for ourselves. And I think that's what all these little gifts have been. And I'm going to show you my favorite thing. So this is my angel, Gabriel. It's the first thing I ever bought as an adult. And I was probably like 20, you know, when I first, one of my first apartments and it was the angel Gabriel and whatever I did through all these years, I've made sure she's the first thing I take with me and I protect and I keep it. I don't let movers take it, I take it. And it's because we are the messengers of the time of Christ. We are the messengers that love is real. We are the messengers, the messengers that bring into form what they are bringing us into our direct experience if we pay attention and we're open. So I'm going to give you two short examples, and I'm going to give it to you, James, because I know you must have 100. The first one I'm going to tell you is about our sister, Claire, a very dear sister to James and Bonnie and a bunch of us here, Amrit, <clears throat> Artie, every, everyone knows Claire. So, and some of you will remember this, the day she came into session from a winter snowstorm and she was caught between two trailer trucks, tractor trailer trucks, and she was sure she was gonna be dead. And she said, whatever happened, her car ended up in front of the, tra of the trailer truck in front of her. Somehow she, it was a miracle and she knew the angels picked her up and put her car or put her car through the, the first tractor trailer truck so that the one behind her didn't slam into her and she wasn't killed. She was vibrant and alive. And that's one example. The other great example, oh gosh, my sister Noreen. So my sister Noreen and Harvey for years drove trucks. He's a car guy and they drove trucks all across the country. And um, Noreen had a, a, a great time doing this. You know, she's a very girly girl and she'd get out of these big tractor trailer trucks. One day, Harvey was ahead of her, the, um, her Noreen was behind and her truck started to overheat. So she thought, oh, it's just overheating. I'll pull over and I'll just wait. And the rule of truckers is you don't leave your, your truck. You don't leave, you don't get out, walk away, you sit with it. So she 
calls Harvey on the phone and said and starts to talk to him. And all of a sudden, something in her says, get out of the truck. So she gets out of the truck and she goes to the side and she calls Harvey. And just then a, a, a police lady across the street shows up out of the blue and says to her, run, run. It's going to blow. It's going to blow. And the rain ran like crazy. And that tractor trailer truck blew up in smithereens within seconds of her running. And then she went to look for the lady, lady policeman. She couldn't find her. She described her. And they said, I, we don't know. She, that description isn't anybody here. Because then the cops came and, and took care of everything. So those are two little examples, but there are many. I've had one almost drowned and an angel out of nowhere. This woman named Emily just swam up. I was in Australia in a, one of those riptides and I couldn't get out and nobody knew I was there. And I was all alone and there was no one on the beach. No one, no one to call, nothing. And this beautiful young woman just swam by me and said, do you need help? <laughs> I said, yeah. And she took my arm. And as if they were, as if I could have always done this, we just went to shore. And I said, thank you, thank you. And then she just walked off. I didn't have a chance to catch my breath to talk. Those are examples. All of us have examples. Pay attention to them. Welcome them, welcome, welcome. We're so used to welcoming the upsets in our life that free us to come into our holy, true mind. Let's welcome what's already here that's part of our holy, true mind. So the angels are everywhere. Play with them, have fun with them, thank them, celebrate with them, sing with them, dance with them. Thank you, Brother James. Go ahead. I can't wait to hear what you'll do with this. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Thank you, Vicki. What a beautiful beginning. And I'm glad that you shared the story about Noreen. I know that story very well. And uh, I mean, first of all, Noreen is like a carbon copy of, of Vicki with her enthusiasm and her love, but even more girly than, than Vicki is. And so if you can imagine her behind the wheel of these great big trucks, and the thing I remember that you, you kind of left out was that this woman cop who yelled and pulled her away was an African-American woman. And so when, they, when she asked, she wanted to thank uh, this woman, she was asking the other policemen, the other firemen, um, where is the, this woman? She, she described her and they said, we don't have any African-American women on our staff, on, on the force at all. They, there is none. And that was when she knew that something angelic had just happened. And I'll share two quick stories of my own. I've shared them before, but probably not for a long time. But in one day, I had twice I was pulled from the, the, from the mouth of death by an angel. Twice in one day. I was living in Oregon. I was driving up into the Mount Shasta area. And I was on I-5 on a stretch where there's nobody. There's very few cars. And, and I'm in the left lane because there was nobody else. And I thought, you know, I better get into to the right lane. I, I looked in my rear view mirror. There was no one. So I began to slowly make my way over. And just as I started to, to, to cross that yellow line and move into the into the, the right lane, a gust of wind literally pushed me back, and just then, a car going probably 120, zoom right by me in the right lane. If I had not been pushed by that gust of air, it would have been a disaster for sure. I took a deep breath, I thought, oh my goodness, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's the key, is just to give gratitude. Probably an hour, maybe two hours later, I was at a place called um, Stewart Mineral Springs. Any of you ever been in Stu Stewart? Yeah, beautiful place up near Mount Shasta. And th it, it, they have tubs, private tubs that you're in, but you can go outside and there's a creek and you can do like a, a cold plunge in the creek. And normally that's fine, but this is right after winter. So the snow is melting off the mountain and so it is really a raging stream. But there's one area you can kind of get into. 
And if you're not careful, though, it pulls you into, into a very narrow little piece, and there, there are two rocks, and the water just rushes through them. And I, I had never seen this before. There's a man standing there straddling these two rocks with the water going between his legs. So I get in, and immediately I lose my balance. The current has grabbed hold of me and is pulling me to that spot. And, and I realize if I don't get out, if, I, if I'm not able to stand up, it's about a 10-foot drop onto truly jagged rocks. It would, have, it, it would have been really bad. And I was not able to, and this man just grabs me, stands me up, pulls me over to the side so I can get out of the current, I was so grateful once again. Thank you. And so when I was finally leaving the, the mineral springs, I said to the, the woman at the desk, you know, that was really smart, putting that man there in that little wedge to, to help people in case they got pulled. He, she said, what do you mean? I said, you know, the man, she said, there, we don't have anyone doing that. And I looked out, and of course, there was no one there. Now, who knows? There, there's no way for me, for us to know how any of these things happened. There's no way to know who this African-American policewoman was and why she was there, or if she was the full embodiment of an angelic presence. There's no way to know uh, who picked Vicky up when she was going down the stairs. There's no way to know any of that, or who that man was straddling the, that, that little waterfall area. And yet we do know, don't we? We know that no matter what, grace is active in every moment. Vicki, I, I love what, what you said. I wrote it down. Nothing is true in the spirit of doubt. And then I added, but everything is true in the spirit of love. So why wouldn't that be an angel, even if it was someone who, who just felt the need to go and straddle that, that little area where the water was flowing through? Maybe that was just a man who suddenly had this inspiration. You know what? I'm just going to go stand there and just be present. I don't know. And you know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't, because angels are everywhere. Most particularly, they're in and as you. That's why, I, I mean, if I, if I had my instrument here, I would sing probably one of my top five favorite songs that I've ever written called Entertaining Angels. In fact, I'll just sing a little bit a cappella, just so you can hear it. I'm entertaining angels. I'm opening the door. Everyone who comes to me is an angel to adore an angel that I've been waiting for. They're all angels that we've been waiting to receive. Most importantly, you're that angel. Will you be that angelic presence today? Maybe in listening today, the angels will be communicating to you to stand in a certain place, to go speak to a certain person. Whatever it may be, the key is to listen and to know that you are an angel in bodily form, just as there are angels that are not in bodily form, but spiritual form. But we're all the extension of the love and the loveliness of God. That's the key. It doesn't matter if we're in bodies or if we're out of bodies. We are called to love and to serve one another. And remember, as Vicki started that whole line, be not afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of here because the angels are always with us. So, I, we have a few minutes. I, I'm just going to turn to the Namaste group real quick. And does anyone else have a short, angelic, miracle story? Leah, come up. Come on up and sit and share it with everyone. We have, we have a few extra minutes. Let's get one more angel story in. So it's Halloween night in San Francisco. I'm working for Leonard Orr, and I'm driving a hand-me-down Cadillac. I'm dressed as a witch, and I'm going to see uh, a person that's channeling basically a spook. I'm driving along, not real fast. I fail to see a bus. 
and I ran right into a bus. And I real it was before uh, seat belts, and someone or something put their hand on my chest and held me in place. A spook, a CIA agent? No. <laughs> oh, okay. A spook. Wow. Okay, let's let's do one more. Mirna is gonna. You you have one too. Okay, let's do two more. Mirna and then Ravi. Mirna, Mirna, come on up. Isn't this fun? <laughs> have a seat, dear. People love sharing angel stories. When I was about 16 or 17, had didn't have a driver's license too long, uh, my father, for some odd reason, let me drive when the family was going. Uh, I grew up in eastern Oregon. We were driving north towards Spokane to see our relatives. And uh, for the, some of you who are from Oregon know that there's Cabbage Hill and there's all these turns. And it was dark. And I came, it's high up, and there's a cliff on one side. And I was probably going a little faster than I should have, and a truck came around the corner. And I, there was no place to go because it's between the mountains and this. And I said, I'm going to kill my whole family. It's coming right at me. So I closed my eyes, and I opened them, and the truck was gone, and I was on the road. I can't imagine how it happened. <laughs> One more. Inspiring. A friend of mine was stationed in Germany in the army, and one night he got very drunk, and he decided to go swimming in the ocean, and it got extremely foggy, and he had no clue where the shore was, and he heard an inner voice that told him which way to swim. I'm sure we all have stories about angels, and sometimes we may not even know it. We may not even know that that was the presence of a spiritual angelic force that was guiding us. And that's the key, guiding. We have to be open to the guidance. We talk a lot about being open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. In other words, to listen, to listen deeply to that still, quiet voice that's within each one of us. Because, yes, the, the angelic universe, whatever you want to call that, is on a different plane, certainly. But we are one. There's only one thing going on. We know that. So we are one with those angels, and we can act as those angels for one another. So let's be mindful of that today, that God is one, that we are one, that love is everywhere. And if we just tune in to that love, the angels, all of the spirits, even the spooks, <laughs> will speak to us. And to this we say, Amen, 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 e punto. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Have a great weekend. And if you can, join Namaste Village for Sunday morning. We, we have our, our, our dear ministers, Larry and Denise, who are going to be sharing again. And they're fabulous. So... Join us then. Namaste. Oh, we have thank oh, you. I love you. Thank Let you. Me turn it over. Yeah, Let you. me turn it over to Scott. Hold on one second. Leave meeting. Okay. Let me find Scott here. Oh, let me stop the recording first. One second.